Pentagon Jr. was born on February 5th in 1985 in Veracruz, Mexico. His real name is not a matter of public record, as is often the case with mass wrestlers in Mexico, where their private lives are kept a secret from the wrestling fans. Most will know Penta and his real-life brother, Ray Phoenix, as the Lucha Brothers, currently signed to AEW Wrestling. In this video, we will explore the backstory of Pentagon Jr. For this, we will need to go back to Mexico in 1995. At this time, Penta was 12 years old, but the original Pentagon was just starting his career in AAA, an offshoot of the popular CMLL Wrestling Federation. One of the top stars of CMLL at the time was a luchador who went by the name Octagon. Octagon was such a crowd favorite that the promotion wanted to create a mortal enemy for Octagon to face off against, so a rival was created and went by the name Pentagon. The original Pentagon would look just like Octagon, but with minor differences. The original Pentagon would only use this mask and persona for a small amount of time from 1995 to 1996. It was here, in early 1996, where the curse of Pentagon began. The original Pentagon was wrestling in a tag match against popular luchador La Parca. When La Parca threw Pentagon into the air, he crouched too much to such a degree that he exposed his neck and the fall immediately caused him to have a cardiorespiratory arrest. In the blink of an eye, he lost his life in the ring. It did not take long to transfer him to a hospital. Inside the ambulance, he was receiving CPR to revive him, but the attempts failed. When he arrived in the emergency room, the defibrillators joined forces to return his pulse. It took them eight minutes to bring Pentagon back to life. Due to his injuries and his age, the original Pentagon decided to retire. More about the curse later on. In 1997, the Penta that we know today was 12 years old and being told that his father would only have three years left to live. As he was the oldest of his three brothers at the time, he was the one who had to drop out of school and work to support his family and make enough money to buy medicine for his father. Meanwhile, also in 1997, a second Pentagon was selected, Jose Mercado Lopez, who was now known as Pentagon II. Mercado was more successful than the original Pentagon and even won the Mexican national middleweight title from the original Octagon in March of 1997. Mercado stuck with AAA until 2000. When he left, a third man took over the role of Pentagon, Ricardo Moreno Antonio, a 15-year veteran who had previously worked as Dragon Chino. It was decided that the Pentagon moniker would be retired at Triple Mania 10. Octagon and Pentagon were forced to team up and take on another Lucha team. Whoever lost this match would have to face each other with the loser having to be unmasked. So for the last time, Pentagon would face his longtime rival, Octagon. Pentagon would lose this match and would be forced to unmask, putting an end to an almost 10-year rivalry. In 2012, AAA was seen as the number two promotion to CMLL, and in an attempt to gain popularity, they decided to try and recreate some of their best angles from the 90s. So they created a new Octagon, Octagon Jr., and they tapped the original Callisto from the WWE to wear the mask. But he would need his rival, Pentagon, so a new Pentagon was to be created. When the man now known as Pentagon Jr. started wrestling for AAA in 2011, he had a dark dragon gimmick and it wasn't working. So in 2012, they wanted to give him the Pentagon mask. Some of the other wrestlers told him it was cursed because the other guys who wore the mask had bad luck. And some of this bad luck included the original Pentagon who almost died in the ring and another Pentagon who was sentenced to 27 years and six months in prison. But they're just, we're also kind of afraid that it was a dated gimmick and no one could get it over. Pentagon thought this was stupid and it inspired him to create the motto, Zero Fear. He wanted to make it known that he was not afraid of anything and he would use Zero Fear as his war cry and lifestyle. Penta says the people have told him it has changed their lives. He says that wherever he goes in character, people will stop him and tell him that thanks to his motto of zero fear, 
they were able to overcome an illness or some other hardship that they have faced. One such story that he shared during a recent interview on the Vampiro podcast was of a man who approached Penta with a large stack of papers and he wanted Penta to sign it. Penta was at first hesitant to sign since he didn't know what it was and it looked like some kind of legal contract. The man explained that it was a contract, but it wasn't for Penta. It was for his wife. The man went on to say that he told his wife that he had zero fear when he resolved to divorce her. He wanted Penta's autograph on the document so that the man who invented the slogan, Zero Fear, would also stand by him in his resolve. While the Pentagon gimmick was working better than the original mask and title, Penta was still struggling to break through in Triple A. So when an opportunity to go to the United States and join a newly forming wrestling federation was presented to him, he decided to have no fear and accept the offer from Lucha Underground. When asked about joining Lucha Underground, Penta said that he was the last one that they recruited for the short-lived but critically acclaimed promotion. Penta said that they originally only wanted high flyers, including his brother Ray Phoenix. But with the urging of WCW wrestling legend Vampiro, who was part of the Lucha Underground commentary team, Penta was signed. Vampiro was a strong supporter of Penta, so much in fact that he decided to come out of retirement to work a match with him during their time together in Lucha Underground. In a podcast interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vampiro revealed that he wasn't supposed to be in the Ultima Lucha. But after Pentagon Jr.'s original opponent backed out of the match, Vampiro went up to creative and requested to work the match with Pentagon Jr. and put him over because of how Pentagon Jr. is with the fans despite being portrayed as a villain. Vampiro wrestled this match against the advice of his doctor, who told them that due to the size of his heart and his weight, that if he wrestled, he could suffer a heart attack. This all but added to the emotional effect the match had, and it even had an effect on the crew, when at the end of the match, all the cameramen came and hugged Vampiro and Penta. This ended up being the match that made Penta a star. After that match, Penta says that he became known worldwide and it generated a lot of work in the United States in particular. Penta tore things up on the independent scene for a few years, until he landed in Impact Wrestling and even won the Impact World Championship. It was during this time that Penta was booked to fight Kenny Omega at the original All In event that preceded the formation of All Elite Wrestling. After this match, Penta went back to Triple A with his brother and won the Triple A World Tag Championship that they would then defend at Double or Nothing in 2019 against the Young Bucks. The Lucha Brothers have been AEW World Tag Team Champions and Trios Champions as part of Death Triangle with Pac and are bound to hold AEW Gold again. I had a blast putting this together. I just wanted to come in at the end because I know I left a few loose threads there in this video. The number one being, the number one loose thread being Pentagon's father is actually still alive. He, he lasted way longer than three years. He's been alive for 30 years past the doctor's prognosis, which is a blessing and so incredible. And Pentagon is just very happy about that. Um, a lot of the research I did on this video came from that interview that he did with Vampiro. And uh, unfortunately, there's no like translation on that officially, but you can translate it. And if you do, it is a fantastic interview. And one part I really couldn't work into this video, but I wanted to tell you about was like my favorite part of the interview. It's actually quite wild. At the end, at the very end of the interview, they get through everything else they're talking about. And it's a pretty, you know, it's a, it's a pretty light spirited, good interview that he has with Vampiro. Except at the end, he gets dead serious with Vampiro. And he tells Vampiro, if you ever want to have a final match, I'm your guy. I want to be the guy that you have your final match with. And make no mistake, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you really bad. Now, guys, I'm like, I'm, I'm reading the transcript on this. I'm like, what? Like, he's got to be joking, right? I switch over to the actual footage and... Penta is as dead ass as anyone could possibly be, staring directly into Vampiro's eyes and telling him that he will legit fuck him up 
if he ever steps in a wrestling ring again with him and urging him to do so. I mean, I feel like it's some kind of wrestling angle and, you know, maybe he doesn't really want to, like, end Vampiro's career, like, in the ring. I mean, I, I think it's a very, you know, wrestler kind of sen sentiment to give, but it's wild. I've never seen a podcast guest, like, at the end of an interview, just, like, straight up threaten the host. So I thought that was really cool. I mean, Penta's a great guy. He's super intense, very interesting character. And I really love putting this video together. Uh, some big news coming up for Penta is that they are going to actually be returning to the Lucha Underground Temple. If you know what that is, and man, you really got to check out Lucha Underground if you haven't already. Every episode of that show that I've ever caught has been phenomenal. I hope they come out with some kind of deluxe box set on it, Blu-ray, whatever. Uh, but they're returning. They're doing Republic of Lucha 7, Hit the Lights, in the Lucha Ground Temple. I believe it's entirely sold out, but you can watch it on Triller TV. So they have, like, almost the full cast of Lucha Underground is coming back, so it's like a real kind of, like, revival of that. Should be a really interesting show. So check that out. Check out another video on this channel. There's a lot of good ones to see and grave diggers. Let me know what you think about this video and if you'd like to see more of these and keep digging. He is I and I am him and I, the undisputed trend Matt Taven and this dork behind the camera, some Melvin's only to say, grave diggers keep on digging, whatever that means. I am AEW wrestler and Ring of Honor tag champ, Mike Bennett. And remember, grave diggers keep digging, but not the monster truck. Even though my son really likes that monster truck, I kind of like Son of a Digger and Zombie. I'm going off on a tangent about monster trucks because my son really loves monster truck, but we're talking about the YouTube channel. So make sure, Grave Diggers, keep on digging, baby. So this is Mark doing one half part of the party saying what up to the Grave Diggers and you doing your thing, bro. Alright, like, subscribe, and watch another video or be cursed. Uh, if you're cursed, that means the Grave Diggers will keep digging your graves. Yeah. Probably want you to do it.